Hey guys, so today is going to be a very different type of video. I would have never thought or wanted to make a video like this for at least a very long time, but um, I don't even know where to start. But as some of you guys um, might know, um, my dog Zuma, she has been going through a lot of stuff. And I guess I'm just gonna start from the beginning. So on February the 18th, um, we took Zuma to the vet because she didn't really want to stand on her right hind leg. And she got it checked, then did some x-rays and um, they just wanted her to rest for a few days and she would get some pain medication. Um, and then that should hopefully be it. But after a week and a half, it it didn't get any better. Yeah, so a, a week and a half later, it's now March, the 1st of March. Um, and we went, her, we went to get her checked again um, with the leg since it didn't get any better. And they wanted to send us to a different vet, um, which is like a bigger vet hospital, I guess, because uh, they were pretty sure that she would need surgery for that. So I called that vet the same day and got a, a time for her on on Wednesday the 10th or March 10th. I thought, fine. Um, but that a few days before we went to the vet, uh, she had gotten a pretty upset stomach. Um, it was it wasn't that bad, but it, it was normal and some of the symptoms or side effects from the pain meds would be like an upset stomach and there might some blood might come out with, with the poop. Um, but it, it only got worse and she started to lose a lot of weight. I think within the two weeks or the week and a half, she lost 1.5 kilos, which is a lot. And she's... She was very, like, slim. She wasn't underweight, but she was... For a bulldog, she was, like, not very bulky. It only got worse um, from March 1st to March 7. We visit the vet five times that week. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Sunday, we went to the vet. Friday, so that would be March 5th. A few days earlier, she got some like something we could give her that should bring the her stomach back in balance, so she wouldn't put water basically. Um, and after a few days, it hadn't gotten any better, and I called the vet to just you know make sure or ask when I needed to get or start to get really worried since she wasn't getting better, and he wanted me to come in, and he checked her again and. I'm pretty sure that every time we went to the vet, uh, they would feel her stomach area. Um, and this time he could feel something in her stomach. Um, it was like a knot or... <laughs> At first he thought that she might have swallowed something or eaten something that she wasn't supposed to. Um, so he, he did an ultrasound on her but couldn't really tell what it was. I think at that point from Monday to Friday she had lost 600 grams. Um, so I was just told that she she didn't really have an appetite, she only wanted to eat canned dog food. Um, so I was told to just give her what she wanted to eat as long as she didn't throw up. So Saturday went by, she didn't really do anything besides sleep, eat and poop and pee. Um, she had zero energy. And her, she, he also did a blood test on her Friday and it wasn't good. And then Sunday, she threw up twice during the day and then in the evening, uh, she threw up five times within 30 minutes. So we called the vet and she wanted us to come in so she could check her. And she felt the stomach as well. She had only heard about Suma <laughs> because we were like... A regular client at that point um, and she wanted to kind of look for herself so she said that she wasn't gonna charge us for doing an, an ultrasound but she just wanted to see herself see it for herself and she said it did not look good at all I think she I was down with her doing the ultrasound um, she could like pause the screen and then do like some measurements 
And I think it was 4.5 times 7, like the size of the thing in her stomach. And, oh no, that's pretty huge, I think. We had already made a deal with the vet that we were going to bring her in the first thing Monday morning uh, so that they could check her and possibly, you know, open up and remove the thing in her stomach. But she was like, I'm going to have to send you to the vet we were supposed to go to that Wednesday to get her leg fixed. Um, because, she, uh, and then she said that if it would have been an older dog, she would have known that it, the time has come for, for that dog. But since it was, like Suma was nine years, not nine years old, nine months old. She called that hospital and wanted to get a CT uh, scan on her. Um, if they could take her early in the morning, because if we didn't do anything, uh, Suma was gonna die. That's what she said. <sighs> Sorry, I think you guys know where this is going. <laughs> um... Jesus Christ. Um, so that evening, my boyfriend and I, we kind of just um, went home, cried all night, and usually Suma would sleep out in the hallway. Um, we would make like a small area for her. Um, but that night, we just wanted to spend as much time with her as possible, so she slept in our bed that night. We just cuddled her and hoped for the best. But we kind of knew that. We kind of knew already that that would probably be her last night with us. But we also knew that we needed to, to still have hope for her. But, you know, it had gotten to that point where, you know, she had zero energy. She would only get up to go to the door. Um, that was her way to tell us that she needed to go pee. Or she would get up to eat or drink. Other than that, she would just lie down and take a nap. So, and even every time we brought her outside, um, when she had done her business, sometimes she would just lay down on the grass and like she she had no strength left. Um, she was very weak. Um, so we ha we basically had to carry her everywhere, which it was very tough. It was very tough to look at um, and witness that you know a puppy like she she was still just a baby um have that zero energy when she was supposed to you know just run around and play and be happy that she was just so unwell but Monday morning came the vet there she she did a another blood test on her and she had lost even more blood than she had that Friday. I think her blood percent Friday was 27, I think she said 27 something. And Monday it was down to 17 point something. Which, <laughs> it's not good. It's very bad. So she gave us two options. Um, she could try and do an ultrasound like the two vets before her had tried to do and see if she could identify the thing in her stomach um, and then they could try and open her up and see if it was something they could do something about um, or they could um, put her in a CT scanner and that way they could tell right away if they were able to do something about it or if if it was something that they could that they could just remove and she would be fine um so because now the the ct scanner is very expensive and it was only that that's the thing we chose to do because we didn't want to wanted her to go into surgery and then possibly they wouldn't be able to do anything about it we didn't want her to go through that so we chose the expensive route and luckily um, our insurance covered it. Um, they just need to improve it beforehand, which they, thank God, they did that. 
um, even beforehand we talked to the vet and said that if the insurance didn't want to cover that um, we were just gonna give her peace this is probably too early to talk about it's only been a week Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah um they brought her in and said that we could just drive home for the day and then they would call her i think it was about 9 30 at this point like in the morning um and then around about 12 the vet called me and said that she had a huge knot in her stomach um and that they could see that they could see um I, I don't know, I, I know the Danish word for it, but they could see change in her lymph, lymph knots um, and in her lever, liver. Um, so there was nothing they could do for her. They had, she had pulled out some cells from the lymph nodes and it was cancer. Um, so, she said the only reasonable thing would to be, you know, to put her down. And she then asked if it was something we wanted to be a part of, or how we wanted to do things. So, of course, we wanted to say goodbye. Um, but she did warn us that since <clears throat> that she had been, you know, since she had been sedated, that she might be a bit confused once we once we got there. Once we got there, I think we had to wait another thirty minutes before she she carried out, you know, Zuma, and and luckily she was more awake than we had hoped for. Um, she recognized us right away. Um, you could always tell because she would, she would lay down her ears and just look so happy. Um, so we went into to this room. Um, so we went in there and we had bought her her donut um, that she loved, so that um, she would have something comfortable and something that she knew to make her you know the most comfortable um and then we had brought one of her favorite stuffed animal it was like a small penguin she asked how long we wanted to say goodbye and we said five to ten minutes um you know it's saying goodbye to it's only gonna make it worse and she was so sick that it was just unreasonable for us to you know, keep her alive just because we wanted to, you know, say goodbye for longer. Um, we didn't think that was fair, so we got to say goodbye and it was probably one of the best goodbyes that we could have hoped for. Uh, she was present, you know, she was giving us kisses and telling us that it was okay. So on March 8th, um, we said goodbye to our princess puppy <laughs> way too early and it's just so unfair I would have never thought that her injuring her leg would lead to her you know it, it wasn't related to anything but you know from we got the first scare with her leg then that leading to her dying of cancer is just so crazy and it's just it feels so empty without her you know you so easily get used to that there's always someone with you at home and there's always you know there's always someone who wants to cuddle um, but the worst thing probably that day one of the worst things was you know, to come home and put the key into the door and not hearing her come running across the floor. 
um, to greet you. I'm so sorry for the sad video and I'm a total mess. I really didn't think I was gonna cry this much because I have talked about it. You know, I still go to school and we have talked, I've talked to some of my classmates and stuff about it and the teachers. Um, I've talked about her at work and the situation, so I don't know why it just... I guess it's easier to put up a facade when you are out in public than it is at home. <laughs> but yeah, um, we're still grieving very much, um, but trying to get into a normal routine. Which is why I'm gonna try and, you know, keep up with videos. I took kind of, I kind of took the week off. Um, the last video I put up was recorded before everything happened. It's just getting used to her being gone, basically. Uh, I know some people are just going to say that it's an animal and I know that, but, you know, once you live with it, it becomes a part of your family and everyone around you loves that dog so much. Um, the past couple of, couple of days is hasn't been fun, but um, we're st slowly starting to move on and I'm not crying every day as I did in the beginning. Um, we've also, you know, packed all of her stuff away and got him gotten them out of the apartment so we don't have to look at it and that's been good for us I think. I'm sure that we'll get another dog in the future but for now it's just healing. So I don't know, thank you for watching this video if you made it through the end to the end um, and Thank you for all the love and support on all the other videos I've made. I really appreciate it and I'll talk to you guys very soon.